Hi everyone, I'm Joe. Today it's time for me to do my monthly reading wrap up for June 2023. June was a good month overall. I read three books by multiple different authors in one genre and it also happened to be my birthday which would have been a, a little bit depressing frankly because my own family and everybody I know in day to day of real life actually completely forgot it was my birthday and whilst I do not place much importance on my birthday, well none really, I don't care about it particularly ha having people actually even acknowledge it is nice, thankfully which I am one thing now for uh, several booktube friends online Rachel, Kelsey and Raya as well as two friends due to Twitch actually did that birthday to me and I really appreciate them uh, saying it to me because otherwise my birthday would have passed throughout anybody actually saying a word about it which was the one that been bothered ultimately it is nice to have you know somebody like happy birthday and you know it does make a nice day. Anyway, I will get straight on to talking about the books. The first of which is Rebuilding Tomorrow. This is edited by Sana Delicheva. I hope I am pronouncing that correctly. I believe I am from what I've checked up, but of course all mistakes can be made. This is a short story collection by multiple different authors. I am not going to attempt to uh, name them all. This is a sort of a follow up and a sequel of sorts to the first uh, short story collection called Defying Doomsday, which I read only two months prior to this, or was it the previous month? No, I think it's two months prior to this, in April, I believe it was, and I absolutely loved Defying Doomsday. And I'm almost amazed that this second book. The building tomorrow is just as amazing, frankly. I thought after how um, that collection was so good and there was no letdowns at all in it, I was like, surely with a second collection, there'd be one or two stories that will drop the bar and won't quite fit in and won't work for me personally, frankly. And that didn't happen. I mean, every story was really strong, interesting ideas, interesting themes. And they're just powerful stories, every single one of them, each in their own right. And obviously, what with the um, theme of this being uh, disabled and chronically ill protagonists, in the word from the back of the book, it makes for interesting and powerful reading because that is not something that you see a lot of in uh, books, especially science fiction and fantasy. I mean, as you all know, um, so seeing characters that have um, you know, disabilities or illnesses and them featuring so strongly and them doing well is really nice and when I say this is a follow on from that book it really is quite literary in some cases because some of the short stories in this are short story follow ones from the first book so you get to see several of the same characters again so I would advise if you read the first book you might want to read this relatively soon after because it follows on so well. It was really impressive and yeah, I'm pretty sure these are going to be on my uh, favourite books of the year list, frankly, because they were that impressive, frankly. The second book that I read was also a short story collection and this one didn't work out. And it's surprising because it is Memories Legion by James S. A. Corey. Now, this is a short story collection a compilation um, of short stories from the Expanse universe. Obviously they made an Amazon uh, TV series out of it. And this is obviously all the collected short stories that were published in different places together in one place. And this is very very new indeed to being in the paperback format. I actually only bought this about a week after it was released. And yeah, it failed quite badly for me. This was, I mean, a couple of short stories, it was nice to see some of the characters from the um, main Spider world in this and getting a little backstory and a few extra little bits of information, but it wasn't things that you needed to hear. And frankly, it, 
and it wasn't things that I, I didn't think was particularly interesting because there was like certain events like for instance there is uh, the butcher of Anderson Station is one of the short stories in this this is related to a character that gets that nickname in the main expanse and you get the story of why he got that nickname but it's not needed you know what he's got that nickname for you know it's powerful and it's actually more powerful in the main series because it's like this sort of almost legend the myth of the character getting this reputation so having it explained to you and having a story about it I didn't really care too much and there's several others that are related to other characters that at first I mean one of them being the character of Amos who is a interesting character let's say one of the main crew from the main series and you think one of him when he was younger and how he was living on earth before he you know obviously came in, into space and you know, started living on a spaceship and working there with the main crew would have been interesting but somehow it felt flat it didn't feel very emotional and there's no real connection there and I think maybe because the main nine book series are obviously all quite fairly longer books and these are all short stories I think it's the format, the short story format for The Expanse when you're, if you're expecting massive depth and length and sheer volume of the world building didn't work for me it might work for other people but for me Sadly, this really didn't work out well, which I'm not entirely surprised, but it, it, it's a shame. It really is, because I was hoping to like that. I will do a, um overall series review now that I've read that. I was waiting purposely to read that. Now I wish I kind of hadn't bothered waiting to read that to do my review. But that's as and when. The third and final thing that I read is actually the only actually full-length novel that I read, and that is... The Kraken Wakes, written by John Wyndham. Now, this is the oldest uh, novel of this collection. This was written multiple decades ago. And the age actually doesn't show quite as badly as what you might think. Because this is, well, let's just say The Kraken Wakes is directly linked to something that happens. Basically, strange events start happening on Earth. And the oceans, unsurprisingly, I mean, the Kraken, start becoming problematic and dangerous for humanity to sail on. And things start spiralling outwards in a rather interesting and alternative fashion. Normally, in modern day books, it would have bigger threats, or at least different style of large effects, and it would be explained more and be reasoning in this. It's the unknown factor. You don't know what you're dealing with. None of the characters do, and the reader doesn't. You know, often with modern day books, the characters might not know, but you'll know. And some of the uh, sort of interest and intrigue is trying to work out or trying to predict. Oh yes, the characters will know what the danger is, like I do, the reader. At this point, with this, we don't know the um, danger or what the issue is really. It's just it's the unknown it's a mystery and it works really well and it doesn't show its age because frankly I often think books from golden age of science fiction this is I believe fractionally past that golden age era but not by much often come across with certain viewpoints let's say and writing styles that do not always favour certain characters specifically if you're female he doesn't exactly favour them entirely as well. With this, no issue. It's like reading a modern book. He actually, the author realises that women actually exist and they are completely and utterly equal to men. I think, look, which all golden age books mm, doesn't always come across. Even if the authors, um, I mean, I've looked into this, even though the authors may have had the view of, you know, equality. Their writing style doesn't show it. Their writing style comes across as fairly sexist, and there's other issues with it. 
this is quite open minded it's even and quite modern which I was actually impressed by so I would highly recommend this it's well written got an interesting plot and that sense of mystery and unknown even to the reader as well as the characters I really enjoyed and I thought that was actually quite impressive so that's definitely my uh, I would say my favourite but um, the building tomorrow was also really really impressive as well so that is it for this video so if you have read any of these three or you would like to or you'd like to know more information then please leave a comment and I'll try to answer those to the best of my ability I will link those three books in the description box below and with that said that is it for this video so thank you for watching and I'll see you another day bye for now right let's do this for now